No, dear folks, when we turn to God's Word at John 8 and verse 31, Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. If you continue in my word. When you don't have that kind of spirit, you're only going to have a stop and start religion. Off and on religion. There's no, there will be no continuity. How would, it you, how would you like if we had a connection given here to the electric supply which just cuts off every couple of seconds, comes back again, cuts off, comes back again? You can't live with such a situation. You say there's something wrong here. I don't want to live in this place. And how horrible it would be to be turning on Jesus for a few moments or a few minutes and turning on the devil the next few minutes. What? What are you trying to do? You're trying to say there is no reality in my experience. You can't say there's no reality in Christ. But you must admit there's no continuity. There is no dependability. There is no trustworthiness. You know, one of the great generals of the last war, who was rated as the greatest general in the battlefield of the American forces, was General Patton. General Patton when I went once day once into a hospital tent where the casualties from the front were being brought in, and he saw a, a poor private, I mean a soldier. Enlisted man sitting there huddled up, his nerves all shattered, and he flew into a rage, slapped him, sent this fellow who is a coward out of the hospital. And he did it twice over. And you know, it did not get into the reporter's realm quickly enough to damage his reputation. But, as the general who was in the midst of an awful struggle to recover Europe. He could not tolerate a coward. He was, this fellow, unfortunately, was a sick man. He was a real patient. However, the general did not understand his case. 
and jumped to the conclusion that he was a mere coward. Now, if we are going to bring that to the Christian soldier, how many cowards do we have who need the slapping of the general? How many cowards do we have? Plenty of them. He said, get this malingerer out of the place. Now, continuity. If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples. Now, the Lord Jesus Christ also said in, in John, the 15th chapter, you know, the disciple is a man who brings forth fruit. Eighth verse. Herein is my Father glorified. John 15 and verse 8. Herein is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit. You know, people are just waiting to find a shoulder on which to weep, or someone to curry favor with. Yeah, as it is said today, it's not what you really are, but whom you really know. What rubbish is that? Whom do you know? Somebody is right on top, will pull some strings? Or are you a person who is capable, hardworking, can deliver the goods. No, it's, it's a sad perversion of in Christian society. You know, these Christian values have become so corrupted. You can't call them Christian values anymore. They are heathen values. Heathen values. Heathen never trust each other. You know, when I was a little boy going to school, at the post office, quite a big post office, occupied a part of our grounds. It was carved out of uh, the grounds where I played my games and lived as a little boy. And that postmaster said to my father, A Hindu, a Brahmin, is a priest, man in a priestly class, never trusts another. Well, have we become a continent of Brahmins then? <laughs> that would be something. Nobody wants to trust the other. What's wrong? The yes of a person has no validity. The no of an individual has no truth in it. Oh, how sad. So, my dear friends, the, dis the disciple is a person who brings forth fruit. And don't you think that this downturn of today, 
which has plunged many people into an awful gloom and pessimism and fear. Don't you think this is the time when if Christianity, if your Christianity is real, you can and ought to inject some hope into people? Are we also going to be submerged by this tide of woe and fear and frustration? No. Great peace have they that love my law, love my word, and nothing shall offend them. Continuity in tough times. Now, that's all, that's all we see in the Bible. Tough times producing men and women of faith who were able to grapple with those problems that submerged others. Now that's what happens when we live with Jesus. Now, I am surprised that the Bible, when it speaks of Mary Magdalene, this is what the Bible says, you know, in the concluding chapters of the Gospels we find Mary Magdalene being mentioned in, the, in Mark, the 15th chapter and verse 40. There were also women looking on afar off, among whom was Mary Magdalene, and Mary, the mother of James the Less and of Joseph, and Salome, who also, when he was in Galilee, followed him and ministered unto him. And to think that during the hours when the Lord Jesus Christ suffered so much, here was a group of Women that stuck by the cross. Now, think of that. A mother who st sticks by the cross and the blessing which she begets. And here the Bible tells us in the 16th chapter of Mark, Again, and then the ninth verse. Now when Jesus was risen early the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had cast out seven devils. Well, if Jesus was going by past record, he should have said, well, you know, here's a woman that was into the occult and demon possession, and I had to cast out seven demons out of her. Can I trust her to be the very first to carry the resurrection message? Yes, he did. Because she's stuck by the cross. 
You know, folks, just think, and what kind of hour do you want to stick by the cross when it is all so comfortable and lug and plush and you have every wish catered to? Is that when you want to be at the cross? Is that when a real disciple wants to follow, it's in the tough times. It's when people are denying Jesus. You see? So, is Christ and Christianity going to be pushed off the radar here in Canada or in the United States? This land that produced such great missionaries and men of such sacrifice, are we not going to see people who can stick by the cross? Mary Magdalene is stuck by the cross at an hour when there was danger, imminent danger for her. That was no time to stick by the cross. You would have advised her probably, saying, save your skin. Get out of here. This is no place for somebody who wants security. What kind of cheap Christianity have we got today? I don't want to have any part of it. Folks, if you continue in my word, if you continue at the cross, then are you my disciples indeed. Otherwise, you're just People who give lip service, time servers, self-servers. What will I get out of it? No. What shall I do to minister to my Savior? What shall I do at this hour of Trial and peril. You know, friends, we seem to have gotten a wrong idea of our calling. Completely wrong idea of our calling. If you continue in my word, if you continue in the battle and the forefront of the fray, then are you my disciples indeed. So, when I look at these examples of people who stood steadfast, you know, Florence Nightingale had to face a lot of opposition from her high-born family. What are you doing with these poor people? Come on over to the party the queen, the king is wants us to join him in one of his garden parties. 
No, I have something to, something better to do. I will go and serve. You know, we belong to a different nature altogether. A different caliber. Oh, folks, let us not fail our master at such a time as this. The Lord will teach us not only to overcome circumstances, he will teach us to overcome that inward nature which is replete, full of pride. And that is an awful impediment for discipleship. Let us pray. Let us tell God, Lord, I want to count in the day of battle. I want to be true to you. Precious Lord, we hate to run away from the battle. You did not run away from the cross. We want to bear that cross and be steadfast and stick by the cross. At such an hour as this, when nations are renouncing their old faith and their traditional charity to accommodate every manner of evil and abominations. At such an hour, O oh Lord our God, help us to stick for the, with the truth, knowing that the truth sanctifies and, a di and discipleship consists of continuity. So, Lord, hear our prayer and help us to be true and not just lip worshippers. Save us. Let us not look at the weak or the weary, but let us see our calling to lift up the faint-hearted. Please, Lord, hear our prayer. In Jesus' holy name, amen.